so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to start learning how to take the meandering that we were doing in the first video, and we're going to start creating some phrases out of that in this video. So again, none of this stuff can be rushed. It all takes time. But what I'm going to do is take this metronome that I've got again. I'm going to set it to 100, so it's not way too fast. And again, please watch the other video if you haven't done so, so this all makes sense. So I'm going to set the metronome at 100. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be meandering. But this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to intentionally stop in different places. Where before we learned about meandering and before we started practicing meandering, we stopped because our brain would shut down, right? So our fingers would stop moving. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do it voluntarily. We want to do it in different places to create different phrases. And think of phrases as almost like sentences. If you were trying to talk to somebody or you were doing some speaking, public speaking, you need to learn to be dynamic in the way that you talk. It keeps people engaged. So the sentences shouldn't all be exactly this, right? Uh, Bueller, 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 right? They, they shouldn't all be exactly the same uh, length. So with phrasing, what we're going to do is we're going to start trying to create some longer phrases and some shorter phrases, and we're actually going to stop playing, which gives a listener the end of the sentence, okay? Because as guitar players, oftentimes we do this. <laughs> And we stop on notes, it gives us a chance to think a little bit, but the listener hasn't heard any pause. If we actually learn how to stop, and add those pauses in, it actually sounds quite nice. So let me kind of show you what I mean. I'm gonna start meandering, and then I'm going to start uh, creating phrases by actually stopping playing in different places. So watch this. So as you can tell, it's beginning to sound a little bit more like music because I'm adding in some rhythm, right? That's really what's happening is I'm taking this series of eighth notes. And I can start adding in little pauses um, or stops, physically stop the, the strings from vibrating. And all of a sudden, everything starts sounding a little bit more real. When we were just meandering the whole time, of course, it was overkill. But the point was, it was teaching us how to move. Now we're using all of these various techniques of meandering, but we're trying to put it into a realistic perspective as we're playing. Okay. So if we were doing this over a jam track, which if, if I try and load a jam track now, it's just going to make a mess. But uh, you can certainly try this over a jam track. But what I would do is if you go out on YouTube or whatever, and you're looking for backing tracks, try and find something that's in the key that you're trying to practice in and find something at the tempo that you're trying to meander in. Don't find something at 140 beats a minute when you're meandering at 100, right? Because that's, that's not gonna serve any good purpose. So make the, the backing track that you're looking for, make it work for you, even if you have to create your own backing track, right? But, but don't just keep trying to find just random things and then you go, well, I can't do this. Well, there might be a reason that's above you, right? It's it's not your fault that the, the backing track is way too fast or whatever the case may be. Find something that fits where you are, okay? So with this phrasing element, what we're doing then is we're adding in pauses and stops. And it's kind of cool, right? So that's the next step in this is to try and start learning how to create these phrases. Use the meandering technique just like you were before but start putting in pauses and try and make those pauses different sizes or stops, if you will. Pause means the note keeps ringing out. Stop means you physically stop the strings from vibrating. And try and be aware of making longer phrases and shorter phrases. Very short, longer, right? Medium size, whatever it is that works for you. But explore that a little bit. And then what we're going to do in the third video okay, is we're going to start talking about some effects that I think are really, really important for you to do and not 
not effects from an amplifier or, or an effect pedal, but amp effects that you do on the guitar itself.